like to call the meeting to order. Uh, advise everyone in attendance that this meeting is being recorded. Obviously, there is no one else here recording. So I'd ask you all to join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under special recognitions, recognitions we have uh, Congressman Govern here with us this evening um, to present us uh, the district with a gift, if you'd like to. Yes, please. Well, thank you very much, and uh, let me first of all thank you all for your service and for what you do for the schools and for our kids. I appreciate it very much, and I've seen firsthand the uh, the incredible uh, school system you have here in Auburn, and it's something I think everybody should be proud of, and I know you all uh, share in that pride. But uh, I'm here to present uh, to you a flag uh, that will be flown in front of the uh, the uh, high school, but also maybe used, uh, I think, ultimately for the uh, major David Broder Memorial. And um, as a friend of the Broder family, uh, I, um, I think, uh, like everybody else in this community, my heart, heart aches for them and uh, for the loss of, of, of their son. But uh, I appreciate his service to our country, his bravery, his courage, uh, and I think it's important that uh, we celebrate his life and remember, uh, remember him always. And so um, I want to come here because uh, I was told you needed a flag, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present you this flag. Uh, and uh, anytime you need another one, as long as I'm here, I'll keep on replacing them for you. So uh, uh, let me give it to the chairperson, Laurie. And Thank you very much. That's the only reason why I'm here, but I don't know if you have any questions or anything that you need me to answer, uh, but I figured... Uh, Does anyone have any questions? Yes. The only thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out of your, your schedule and stuff that you deal with every day to come here and uh, present the flag. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate that, but... Uh, these things are important. Uh, Sometimes yes, we all get wrapped up in these big issues and big debates, and, uh, and we forget uh, sometimes uh, that it's all about people. And, uh, and so it's, uh, again, I, uh, I have great admiration for the Broder family and uh, for what their son did, and, uh, and I, I wanted to be here in person. I know I have a quick question. I just, if, if you would, Congressman McGovern, um, I know you, you are on hiatus at the moment, but um, can you just give us a brief update on some initiatives that you're undertaking for the upcoming year? Yeah, um, there's, uh, there are a lot of things that I would like to see happen. I'm not sure how many of them will happen. I mean, right now we are on our district work period, and what I'm hoping that everybody is hearing uh, is what I've been hearing as I've been crisscrossing my district. I just came from Northampton uh, just uh, this very instant. And what I'm hearing is people say, you got to come together and give and take and get things done. This notion of shutting down the government is a bad idea. Uh, this notion of my way or the highway is a bad idea. That politics and life is about compromise. Um, I won't get 100% of what I want, and someone else won't get 100% of what they want, but we need to get our budget done. I mean, you have to get budgets done here. Uh, you need to, you know, uh, make sure that everything is uh, is done on time. We ought to do the same thing in Congress. And uh, I know that there are ideological divides that exist, but uh, but we need to come together and find a way to to move this country forward. And I tell people all the time, we don't have to agree on everything to agree on something. So the something we agree on, we got to get done, and then we can fight about the stuff we don't agree on. Uh, and uh, take a, and you know let let the majority vote and decide which way we're going to go. Uh, you know we, we, we're trying to do the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind, and um, it just uh, you know the House passed a bill that I'm not sure is going to go anywhere over in the Senate, and um, uh, so we're trying to figure that all out. And obviously there needs to be some tweaks to No Child Left Behind, uh, but we also need to make sure that the funding for education that the federal government provides. Is forthcoming. Um, you know, I, I, I wish we would do more to help communities deal with uh, special education. We, we're not living up to our promise on that. In addition to that, there are everything from, you know, teacher training programs to uh, equipment programs to uh, STEM uh, initiatives that we want to support to um, bricks and mortar. That, quite frankly, 
uh, is an important uh, part of making sure kids get a good education. So we're looking at all these things, but uh, uh, what I'm worried about is going back to Washington um, after Labor Day and, um, uh, and, and looking at the end of the fiscal year and not getting to a conclusion one way or the other. I think shutting down the government would be a huge mistake. So, um, uh, again, if my constituents are any indication of what the rest of the country is feeling, they're all saying, you know, work things out. That's what you're supposed to do. I think, um, and kind of piggybacking on what you just said, looking at the federal sequestration in the budget tonight, that we're going to be looking at um, on our agenda is basically 48 plus thousand dollars in grants that are going to be affected by that. And hopefully, you'll continue to advocate, like you said, to make sure those funding sources are there. Yeah. Well, sequestration is something I never supported. Um, and even when it passed without my vote, I thought it was such a bad idea and a stupid idea that it would never become reality. And I thought I would. I thought nothing would surprise me anymore. It did surprise me that uh, sequestration was allowed to go into place. I think it represents an all-time high in recklessness and stupidity, quite frankly. The notion that you're going to cut across the board every program, regardless of its merits, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and, um, you know, under the sequestration mentality, if you had a line item in the budget that was entitled fraud, waste, and abuse, you treat the education budget the same way, and you treat the National Institutes of Health budget the same way, and you treat national defense the same way. Bottom line is, yeah, there's waste. In government, let's get rid of the waste. There are some programs that may be duplicative or, you know, we don't need, we get rid of them. But there are some programs, quite frankly, that need additional investment. And there are some programs that are already cut to the bone. And I, and, I, and, and, and you know, everybody seems to be saying that education is the most important issue uh, facing our country. You know, our economy's future relies on a well-educated workforce. We've got to get it right. Well, if we really mean what we say, then we need to make sure that we don't subject, you know, the limited amounts of federal assistance you get. Uh, we need to make sure that it doesn't get subjected to sequestration. And we need to figure out ways to help provide you additional um, resources, quite frankly, to be able to, uh, to do your job. I mean, look, there are federal mandates that you have to follow that you don't get reimbursed for. Um, you got, you're under state mandates as well. You got all kinds of mandates you're trying to comply with. The notion that we're going to pass down mandates and then take away your funding um, is just ludicrous. So like, I agree with you on the sequestration stuff, and I, uh, you know, and I, and 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 what I've been asking the Speaker of the House to do is to allow there to be a day where people can bring their alternatives to sequestration up for a vote. Let the majority of the House decide how we get out, how we get out of this. And um, I just would say that there are some people, quite frankly, who think sequestration is a good thing. They, they think that, you know, this is a way to cut government. The more we can cut government, the better. You know, I, I, I don't agree with that philosophy, but I, I understand it. I think it's a dangerous philosophy. Uh, I think we need, uh, we don't need excessive government, but we need government, uh, we need enough government to be able to to you know, meet the common good, and that includes education. So, um, I uh, you know I hear you loud and clear. We're trying very hard. I'm hoping that um, rather than a government shutdown, we end up finding a solution to sequestration. Let's maybe find some of the cuts in other places in the budget that really deserve more cuts. You know, protect the good things, um, and come up with a budget deal so that we can keep the government uh, running, and so that you can plan. I mean, if the government were to shut down, or even with the sequestration, you don't know what you're going to expect from us next year. It's hard for you to plan based on the uh, your, your local budget, but if, if, if you can't count on this grant or that grant, or if you think you might even get cut more um, in some uh, in a federal program, uh, that makes it very difficult for cities and towns. So uh, I hear you. We're going to, you know, I'm doing my part. I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to give it give even more than I'd like to give uh, to avoid a catastrophic government shutdown. I'd like to thank you for your presenting the flag to us tonight and also for what you're doing for, for us in our district. Well, I want to thank you for your service. I know, uh, you know, um, you're here every day, so you hear everything. 
uh, the good and the bad about what's going on here. And uh, and I appreciate your service. And look at anything I can do to be helpful in Washington, let me know. And uh, it was an honor for me to come and be able to present you this flag. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. That was wonderful. So we will now, uh, obviously we have no citizens concerned in the comments. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the regular session minutes for July 11, 2012. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is a vote. We'll now move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the first item actually kind of dovetails into what Congressman was just speaking about. Uh, maximizing dollars wherever we can um, and redirecting it to students. So we have an opportunity. I met recently with um, Mr. Gray, Mr. Campbell, and Ms. Flynn, who's the Special Education Secretary. Um, if you'll recall, our Medicaid reimbursement um, a few short years ago was 160000 and these past couple of years has been 112000 and that really is due to a shift in federal el eligibility requirements. As part of our meeting um, to try and see if there are ways to capitalize on potential more reimbursements, uh, we looked to the 240 grant, um, which I noted later on actually has seen a reduction of almost $20,000 due to the federal sequestration. So if, uh, with your approval, what we'd like to do when we write the grant um, for fiscal 14 is to, rather than pay for some out-of-district tuitions, which are for special education students that we can't um, appropriately provide an education for in district, instead of putting that in the 240 grant, we'd shift that to the operating budget. We'd then take an identical amount from the operating, which is their two, the transportation to transport them, and pay that out of the federal grant. The reason is um, transportation is not um, eligible for Medi Medicaid reimbursement. Tuitions for students is eligible. Because the tuitions were paid out of a federal grant, and Medicaid is a federal program, you can't take from two federal programs. So it really is just shifting dollars. There's net zero impact to the budget. It just will be how we write the grant. And I'm also looking for the special ed um, supplies as well, because we can get some reimbursement for those. So my recommendation here, as noted, is for you to approve the transfer and we've actually designated an amount. Mr. Campbell met with uh, Mr. Gray and designated an amount, and with your approval, we'll write the grant as such. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of $287,289 in special education transportation into the 240 grant with that same value and tuitions now being paid from the operating budget. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Make a motion to approve the transfer of 12500 in special education transportation into the 240 grant with that same value in special education supplies now being paid from the operating budget. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for that. Um, the next item, as you know, I've been sharing with you over the past couple of years, or 18 months at least, the new requirement that will go into effect July 1st, that we're going to need to continue to provide an education, um, unless for students it has to be a very serious safety-related one. As I do each year, I review um, the disciplinary reports um, through all of our schools. And in my discussions with the high school's administration, um, students were being put on out-of-school suspension far more um, than I believe they should have, and, and they agreed for non-threatening, for non-safety related issues. There are times when out-of-school suspension is absolutely appropriate. Um, but the problem is we do not have a designated place where students can go staying in school and continue to be educated. So it's my recommendation um, that you approve the hiring of an in-school suspension person and enclosed is a memo from Mr. Hanfield which actually addresses um, this issue. It actually would help put us into compliance with Chapter 222 of the Acts of 2012 which does not go into effect until July 1st of 14 but would allow our students to continue to do their work with appropriate supervision because not all students who go home on in-school suspension are doing their work are keeping up with their studies, and then come back to school and are further behind. Um, so this amount would be a total of, uh, as noted in here, 
little over fifteen thousand um, dollars and we would be looking for someone who was a certified teacher to do that and just because of the job market I'm confident we could find someone to do so so it is my recommendation you approve this Ask a question so so it's so that students don't have to be have an out-of-school suspension right. they would actually come in to school that day and Correct. So what they would do is they would be um, placed into a particular room with the in-school suspension teacher. They would have work that would have been retrieved from their classes and would be expected to do it. They would not be integrating with their the other student body during the school day. And for any day when, um, if there were no students on in-school suspension, we would utilize that person as our first sub and not bring in a new person. So the person would always be doing something. So what do they do about lunch? Actually, what we had talked about is they would go prior to, or someone would go and retrieve the lunch and bring it back to that room, so that way so they're not in no contact, no with contact with other students. I mean, it's it's important that it be a punishment, but so we want it to be a punishment, but have education continue at the same time. Sending them home, it may seem like a punishment. It may not always be for students who are home if someone's not there supervising them, and we have um, very little to any control over them actually getting their work done. And if I may, how do they get to how are they how do they get to school? That that would still be part of the regular transportation, whether they drive or on the bus. And these would be for issues that were non-safety related ones. Sure. So I mean, if there's an extreme case, we would still exercise out of school. So suspensions. there's no excuse that they wouldn't be able to get there. And Correct. Correct. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. For the chair, do you believe that we'll be able to find a suitable candidate for that amount of money? I do, actually. Um, I, I know you, you yep. said with, with the job market being what it is, mm -hmm. but do you think we'd find a more experienced candidate? I know we're not, in most cases, we're not going to be dealing with the best of the best mm -hmm. in our students. Mm -hmm. And I found over the years that someone with more experience with that type of student usually seeks out a little bit more money. Sure. Uh, I would agree with you, Mr. Scobie, that um, some more funding may allow us to be a bit more selective in, um, in the person that we hire, but I know that in the different jobs that we have posted this year, we get hundreds of applications, and I mean, the other way to look at it is it is an opportunity for someone to get their foot in the door and potentially prove themselves um, when an additional opening comes up, but you know, if you're proposing giving me some latitude with funding, that would be great. Not exactly. I was just trying okay. to pick pick your brain mm. and, and see how you felt mm. about it. Yeah. The, um, the administration at the high school is confident that they, they could find someone to do it for that. At the same time, yeah, there may only be two students in there right. on, on any particular day. Right. I would anticipate that would be more the case, and there will be some days when um, when there are not any, and they'd be out subbing, and that's actually at our beyond 30 days sub rate that they would receive. And my only other concern, I think it kind of follows up on what Liz was talking about, and I would never question the way uh, you or Casey mm -hmm. um, conduct business, mm -hmm. but let's say if it was, if there was a physical assault, and um, I, I would just be afraid that the other student would have to see mm -hmm. that individual the very mm -hmm. next day. Sure. And I, don't, yeah. I, I believe that it would be best if, mm -hmm. if that wasn't the case. Sure. And, and truly it would be, you know, as I said, there are some um, incidents in which students engage that deserve an out-of-school suspension. So we would be very cautious in making that determination. I would think when an assault, something like that, that'd be more of a... Correct. Being uh, out-of-school, yeah. An out-of-school yeah. thing than in-school. You're <clears throat> yeah. saying it's just the little things that you're going to do in-school, not something like an assault Correct. outside. Correct. And we're fortunate to have uh, school resource officer Brian Kennedy who um, works throughout the district but concentrates a lot of his time at the high school and, um, you know, he has, his advice is always well, well considered too. Because, yeah, it could be very interesting if there were two assailants and there was a fist fight <laughs> and then they met the very next yeah. morning. No, we would and not have that. And now our brand new $85 a, a right. day teacher has right. to take care of I'm happy problem. to report we have so few physical assaults, which speaks to our students and the administration, but I hear your point. I do. Excellent. Thank you.
can I ask, what constitutes an out-of-school suspension if it's not a threatening situation? Currently, yeah. um, what could happen is, because it's progressive, so if a student misses a detention um, or, you know, talks back in class and gets a detention, doesn't go to it, is assigned to Saturday detention, does not go to that, eventually it adds up, now they get okay. an out-of-school suspension. So it becomes this snowball effect, and um, what was apparent was it was a way to get a vacation day. <laughs> exactly. You know, so exactly. that's really what prompted the initial discussion around it. And, and one more thing, if if what Mr. Scobie is saying and you can't find somebody that you feel is truly suitable, yep. um, then I would hope that you would come back to us and let us know that. And I will. We would, we would help you out in Great. that way. Great. Thank you very much. Um, just through the chair, <clears throat> I am a huge proponent of this because this has always been a thorn in my side was out of school suspensions. I mean, I understand physical assaults and things like that, but that was one of my big pet peeves was giving these kids a day off because you know what? Everybody's parents are working right. now. And so right. these kids were just sleeping in and watching TV and, and really weren't, I don't think, being punished when right. you're in an out of school <laughs> suspension. So um, I support this wholeheartedly right. and would like to um, also echo what Mr. Scobie and, and Mrs. Gribben said that if you feel that you know this fifteen thousand dollars isn't going to get us what we need, I would I would also like for you to come back and and have a serious discussion about that if we could. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. There's no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next item, Mr. Imsey, as chairperson of the school building committee, he works um, for a corporation who may be interested in submitting an application for the construction manager at risk. This is not a department in which he works, but in being cautious, and I think this is a good idea, he spoke to the state ethics and has filled out this disclosure form, um, which sim simply needs to be uh, it formally accepted by the school committee, and I would then provide a copy to Ellen Gabry um, at the town hall. And it is my recommendation you accept this. Make a motion to formally accept Form 191B, State Ethics Disclosure Form, granting Mr. Lurie, Chairperson, permission to sign it. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next item, I just wanted to make you aware, actually, next several items. I've been asked uh, by the Secretary of Education, Dr. Matt Malone, to serve as a member of the statewide elementary literacy expert panel. Um, I spoke to the woman um, from the Secretary's office, and I understand there'll be nine of us on this panel. We'll be meeting four times each year. <clears throat> and I did include the Act, uh, which is the Act of 2012, Chapter 287, regarding third grade reading proficiency. So I'm excited to serve in this capacity and just wanted to make you aware of that. Mr. Warren? Yes. I just want to congratulate you for that. It's, it's, it's really great when, you know, our, our superintendent is out there doing something like this and, and it's representing Auburn, mm -hmm. and so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, if I may, through the, through the chair as well. Uh, Dr. Brunel, were, were you sought out for this? Actually, um, Senator Moore, Senator Michael Moore, um, spoke to me probably, uh, I think it was last fall at some point, and asked if I had any interest in this. And so I put together a letter, and he recommended, and the secretary then, then called and asked me to be part of it. Actually, I don't know if that I shared this with you, but on um, at the end of June, Secretary of Education, I believe I did, was out at the high school with the whole STEM um, the innovation grant in Auburn Middle School was featured, and I get an opportunity to speak. And, and so, so no, that's uh, that was nice. Well, congratulations! Yes. I again, I would also like to congratulate you. That is wonderful. Good. Thanks. Um, just to keep you updated, the Edaval team um, continues their work. We uh, met on July 25th. We'll meet again next week on the 14th. And uh, we can continue to believe that we are in good shape with this. We've had. Um, tremendous cooperation with the teachers union, with the nurses um, union, the administrators have been great. Um, and I also want to make you aware that the, and I'm not sure how it will be reported, but as part of this, um, the Board of Education's acceptance moving to this, is there will be publication of how teachers scored 
by district um, in the four categories. So there was exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. Um, my feeling, and we agreed on this as a leadership team, this was a partial year implementation. Um, we went into this with the teachers saying we are going to work together on this. The goal is for us to enhance the quality and number of conversations we have around teaching and learning. It was not intended to be a gotcha for any um, teacher. So you will see that um, our teachers scored in the proficient category, which is where um, I think for a really a pilot or a partial year implementation. And I expect that next year we will see some into the exemplary, there will be some in needs improvement, and I'd be doubtful if there were any unsatisfactory. We have uh, dedicated teachers, but it's really a whole mind shift where um, needs improvement is not really a bad rating. It just says that you need to do some work in an area, um, and that's a very different thing. So I'm not sure how it will be reported, but just wanted to make you aware of that. So following with this, um, in the coming weeks, I'm going to start to work on my uh, self-assessment and my goals again. So if there are any suggestions you have, whether it's tonight or on September 4th, I would welcome them. If there are any areas which you'd really like to see me focus, um, I would certainly be happy to do that. Can I ask a question? Because of yes. what, what you have in here in, the, um, in your superintendent memo, you're talking about the DESE um, document and whether mm -hmm. or not we want to continue using that. Oh yes, that. thank you. Um, I'm sorry, we have to use the We DESI, have to use that one, but yes. But the self is up about the evaluation that we as the committee put together. Correct. Um, I have to tell you I was not a big proponent of that DESI evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, I felt as though there were many areas in which I felt I was not really um, knowledgeable enough in the everyday workings of what you do mm -hmm. to evaluate what you want it. And in some situations, I had to sort of count on what you were telling us mm -hmm. was going on in these certain situations. Mm -hmm. In areas that I really felt, and I don't know how the other committee members feel, but in areas that I felt, I would never have known mm -hmm. certain things that were going on. And so um, I feel that our tool, to me, is a better way of us letting you know mm -hmm how we feel you're doing and giving you feedback. So with that said, I would be curious to know which documents you got the most information from. You know, I think, um, and I, I agree with your point about the DESI documents. Um, they certainly don't provide the specificity in terms of the different areas of my roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think probably looking back when I reread them, I mean, I, I tried to look at them in their totality. Um, you don't have to answer yeah, the I question. Yeah, I think it was right? all, they were all pieces of it, you know? Yeah. So I don't have a problem with the committee continuing to use the, the document that we created here, uh, quite honestly, together. The DESI one is not an option that we've got to continue right. with. So it's really up to you. And I just thought it would be a discussion for you to decide early on as it, opposed to waiting. And I wasn't here for the evaluation when we, when um, Chairman Lori was uh, saying it mm -hmm. for the public. Um, there, were, there were things that the highest one to me was not as good as the second highest right. one. So it was really, right. yeah. it was very difficult, the uh, rumor, I have to right. say. Yeah. And so yeah. one thing to think about for the whole committee, I, I don't know how everybody else feels, but I, I felt like our evaluation maybe was a little bit mm -hmm. easier for us to give you feedback on. To the chair. Yes. Liz, I, I totally agree. And, and it's, it's the same thing, unfortunately, with the teacher evaluation. It, it would be better if, if, we could, if we could kind of branch out on our own. And, and, and in this case, we already have a document. If we could improve that one, improve that tool, yeah. it would be better because there were some situations where I had to try to relate something <coughs> from that instrument to my dealings with um, Dr. Brunel, mm -hmm. you know, on, on a bi-weekly basis. Right. And, and you just try to fit in those things, and some of them still didn't make sense. It's just, it's just the way it is. So mm -hmm. if we could hold on to our document, I agree, that, that would be best. And, and maybe we can build on that in the next couple of years. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree, too. And I, I believe I, I 
believe I made a comment concerning that at that meeting where, where Jeff was reading out the, um, the evaluation results and, and I said take a good look at the commentary that, that we made because I really think that was our best source. Mm -hmm. So we will keep it. Yeah. And there's no vote needed because we've already got it in place. That's perfect. A um, few other items. The opening day activities Dr. Lose has put together. We have um, quality days planned with our staff in a number of different areas um, that will welcome them in and it's coming very quickly. Um, the Mimsy Summer Institute, I had the pleasure of attending that down at Bridgewater State um, last Tuesday and two of our teachers were there, Karen Ballway for AP Chemistry and Hans de Klerk for AP Statistics. Um, but we also had a number of other teachers who attended pre-AP, AP trainings this summer, as well as people who were working, and Dr. Lose will provide an update on curriculum work, um, different training materials, looking at curriculum. Um, so a tremendous amount of time and energy spent throughout the summer, which is what happens every year. And actually at the September 4th meeting, representatives from MIMSI uh, will be coming to actually talk about the tremendous job that Auburn High School students did and teachers in not only if you remember a couple of years ago we had less than 100 taking AP last year we had 200 next year we have over 400 students registered for those courses uh, and we had a, a lot of qualifying scores so great news um, the Mass Summer Executive Institute just wanted to thank you for um, supporting my attendance there the keynote speaker Doris Kearns Goodwin was absolutely amazing to hear her talk about um, she called them her guys um, President Lincoln um, FDR and um, President Truman as well so it was really excellent and really focused a lot on Ed Eval and really as I said earlier we were in very good shape with that uh, coming up in a couple of weeks we've got our new teacher orientation on the 20th we'll also be doing a secretary's training that day and for our new teachers we actually started this um, last year for the first time we take them on a uh, yellow school bus tour around the district so um, that way they get to see the other schools because oftentimes new teachers when they come to a district they're so engrossed in the work that they do with their colleagues in their school they don't even see where Mary D. Packachog, the high school middle school bring Mar is so it'll be fun. Mr. Gray's looking forward to it I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of update I just wanted to share with you. We did, Mr. Fahey and I attended recently a meeting with Mary Stepanski and Sari Biddix along with Julie Jacobson, Bill Coyle, and Andy Pelletier. Um, as you know, you gave approval to the Auburn Historical Commission to place the cupola from the old high school on the grounds with the understanding that there would be no financial responsibility. So just wanted to keep you uh, apprised of that. and. As we always do, it's a real collaborative effort and trying to help in any way we can without causing financial finances. Um, Congressman McGovern mentioned the Major David Bordeaux Square. Work is underway there. If you've been to the back of the high school, Mr. Fahey is working closely with that team and they remain optimistic that they're on schedule and will be done in August, which is great. And then finally, the District Curriculum Accommodation Plan, the DCAP, that we're required um, to have is here for your review and it is my recommendation that you approve it and I thank Dr. Lizze for putting it together. You want us to make a motion to approve Yes, that? I failed to put that in there. Okay. I'll make the motion to accept the district curriculum accommodation plan as written. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now we're going to business. Great. I brought to you at the July 10th meeting, um, we've had a number of registrations um, this summer. We do it out of central office during the, the um, summer weeks. And the fourth grade class size is at Packachog, um, and this was that it happened the 10 days uh, prior to our July 10th meeting, are now at 95 with two ELA, English language arts classrooms at 25. Um, that has not shifted. We did not lose any students, so it is my recommendation um, that we hire. I need to work with Mrs. Kozik on this. Um, she just happily was enjoying some family vacation time, but up to two instructional assistants to reduce that adult-to-student ratio. 
Yes. I don't. I wasn't here at the July 10th meeting. So could you tell me how many students then that's going to be per classroom? <clears throat> it would be. Um, there are 25 and two and 20. Actually, it would be 25 and three and 24 in the fourth. I'll make the motion to approve the hiring of up to two instructional assistants for Packard Schools Grade Four to reduce the adult to student ratio. Is there a second? I'll second that. For the discussion. I, I have something. I, um, the, the only thing that worries me, I, I know you have to do this now. The only thing that worries me is if those go up mm -hmm. above the 25. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that worries me. I, I'm assuming that at this point in the summer, you're not, you're not. Um, foreseeing that that's going to happen? I'm not at this point. Um, it's <coughs> impossible to predict if, if some new families will move in. Um, but it has, since those that influx of 10, it has remained steady. So okay. I don't anticipate that it's likely um, to change at this point. And, and the other issue is um, in terms of spacing, we don't have space to add an additional classroom. And what this will do is allow what would have been a 25 student classroom to now have two at least adults in there supporting them. And your instructional assistants um, will have so they will be tra trained as teachers or we, are they just We actually be? look for them um, and again we've been very fortunate that we're able to hire lots of people who have their teacher certification. Okay. Yeah that, that's always our goal is to find those that do. At the very minimum they have to be um, highly qualified by NCLB which means the equivalent of two years of college as well. I, I, will, I will approve this mm -hmm. um, however I would strongly suggest that Whoever you hire does have a certification mm -hmm. in, in education because I feel as though just having an extra body in there is really not enough when you have those high of numbers. But no, I agree, and and that's always our goal to do it. And I will say, we've we continue to be very fortunate to have a um, cadre of really high quality assistants who come in and and do support. Yeah. Choice. Actually, I have a new question. <clears throat> Liz kind of asked my, my other questions. Do, do we take advantage of any student teachers in the district? We do. We do. Um, we regularly have them. Um, our guidance department always has them. Um, it's been some time since we've had any. I'm trying to think back. In our elementary schools, we have an awful lot of students who come in for their pre-practicum hours. Um, but off the top of my head, I can't think of one recently. But that's another avenue to look at, too. I think, yeah, I think that would be worth exploring, mm -hmm. even yep. if it was only for that grade level. Sure. Yeah. And, and Liz, what I'll say is, um, from talking to some people, we are getting two, 300 applications for our open teaching positions. So we are getting college-educated, certified people as assistants because they're looking for a job. So we've been fortunate to come in the district to actually have certified would be teachers as instructional assistants. Do they, um, do they vote? Oh, yes, we have to yeah. vote. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think the minute taker tonight, too. Um, budgeting priorities I, I have on the air again, and uh, Mr. Gray was working on our, our budgeting timeline today, so that will be kicking off uh, very soon, very soon. Uh, Mr. Lurie had mentioned this, the federal sequestration, the impact of that, which totals over $48,000. We did not yet at the time of this publication, and nor today, have our Title IIA money. Um, but fortunately, we budgeted anticipating that. If you remember, we started with a 50% reduction and then backed it off. Um, so it would be ideal if these funds came in because we cannot eliminate the support in these programs. 240, for example, is for our special needs students. Regardless of whether we get it from a grant or the operating budget, we have a legal obligation to provide the education for them. So, I was glad to hear the yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. The next item, I included for you a memo from um, Mr. Bouvier regarding the park assessments. And um, in response to the letter that was sent to Senator, Moore, Senator Michael Moore's office from the committee, um, there is the response that was received there. So Mr. Bouvier's memo, um, as you read through it, he talks about the security ban requirements, the bandwidth requirements. One of the challenges is, and it's noted in his first paragraph, is that the minimum specifications will not be finalized until October of 2013. 
So based on the expectations as we believe them to currently be, Mr. Um, Bouvier, based on our CIP purchases, believes that we may be in good shape, but there are still numerous unknowns in this. So I'll continue to keep you apprised um, on it. It is a topic of discussion. It was at the Executive Institute this summer. Um, among superintendents, Auburn is in far better shape than many communities to do this. Um, and I think you join me in, in the concern. Obviously, our first concern is for our students here, but there's a, a, a greater concern for students who are going to be disadvantaged by not having the ability to take this in a you know, computerized thing. So um, we almost expected to hear that there may be a potential delay in this, um, but it was not forthcoming at least this summer. So I'll keep you updated. The school, okay, school building committee, um, the construction manager at risk, that pre-qualification subcommittee has met, um, and we look forward to bringing back, that group is actually going to review through, the, it was actually posted in the legal notices yesterday, they will do the first screening and bring forward to the SBC the top three candidates, and it will be the SBC's decision to pick the top candidate as, who will serve as the uh, CM at risk on the middle school project. And then finally, the press box um, is inching ever nearer completion. Friday, September 6th uh, at 7 o'clock, it's our first home game against Chicopee Comprehensive High, and we are planning a um, brief dedication ceremony. Undetermined at this point whether it be pre-game or during halftime, um, all of you will certainly be invited, so um, just to make you aware. Can we comment on having that Chicopee? Yes. That's who we, we That's, we're going that far out to find people to... People well, here. this actually, that was due to MIAA did a whole reorganization of mm -hmm. the different um, groups or um, leagues that they play in. And um, so Chickie B actually, yeah, it's making the trek out here. Yeah, so we've been switched up with a lot. That's a new one. And then the upcoming events uh, noted as always. Uh, does anyone else have anything in the new business? Um, briefly, I'll just mention that, uh, and I'll probably bring it up on the meeting on the 4th, uh, the uh, Relay for Life at Lemansky Park is September 6th and 7th coming up and welcoming the public to come join us, a great community event. Um, we can now move on to the business and financial report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the first order of business you have before you is the fiscal year 13 budget transfer for omnibus approvals. As I become acclimated into a municipal school system, there are some things that are a little different from a regional school system, and this is one of them. So in concert with business staff, we sat down and went through the uh, fiscal year 13 budget, and I'm asking your approval for these budget transfers in order to um, financially <laughs> Trying to think of the correct terminology to make sure you understand that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? To make sure they're financially um, in the right positions for that year end fiscal year 13 report. Yeah, answer any questions if anybody has. I make a motion to approve the transfers recommended by the business office. A second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 A vote. Thank you very much. Um, the next document you have before you is our first uh, run of the 2014 year to date budget as of August 1st, 2013. As you're probably aware, first budget run of any school year is one of which uh, has little activity uh, other than uh, encumbrances for purchases that were made uh, at the beginning of the fiscal year, as well as accounting for salaries for certain administrators and different personnel throughout the school district that we account for um, through the accounting process the beginning of July 1st. So. Um, this uh, report is for your um, review, and once again, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Are there any questions? And then the last document you have before you is the um, operating budget fiscal year 13 final numbers. Once again, um, in order to account for any expenditures that occurred after the close of the fiscal year, um, these are identifiable expenses that we will be um, providing to our town account in order to create the fiscal year 13 um, account. And um, this represents the um, available budget as of the end of July and those expenses associated with it, bringing us down to um, our total. 
and then a calculation of our teacher salary carryover number to come up with the grand total for the uh, final numbers. Are there any questions? There being none, uh, we do not have any policies, personnel, tonight, but we do have to go into executive session. Uh, so I would entertain a motion and then a roll call vote. I'll make a motion to go into executive session per MGL Chapter 30, Section 21-3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and collective bargaining. Second. Roll call vote. Uh, Mrs. Gribbins? Yes. Mrs. Gibbry? Yes. Mr. Scobie? Yes. Mr. Page? Yes. And Mr. Lori? Yes. Great. Good night, everyone.